as predicted by nearly everyone who has more than a year or two of software engineering experience. The rewritten in Rust versions of the GNU core utilities, uh, known as UUtils, that's, that's the Rust-based versions, what they call themselves, have been causing problems on the recently shipped Ubuntu 25.10 release. In this particular case, the Rust-developed clone of the date command had significant issues that caused automatic system update checks on Ubuntu to simply fail to occur entirely. Uh, now, now, why is that, you ask? Is it because of a bug or some sort of incompat? No, it's because the date command in the Rust clone that they shipped was simply not done. It was incomplete. It was not a drop-in replacement at all, and it makes absolutely no sense why they included it. Now, it's worth noting here that the Rust-based date clone only passes two of the eight test cases for the utility. Uh, so there's a, a set of test cases that are set up for the GNU core utilities. The date command, uh, the date the date tool had eight tests set up and a 75% failure rate, in large part because parts of it just weren't done yet. Uh, and some of the other Rust-based core utilities uh, were, were faring even worse. Here, let me show you a screenshot of just some of them. Uh, now notice the immense amount of red. <laughs> notice that base encode has uh, <laughs> nothing but failures. Uh, uh, fold is predominantly failures. Uh, checksum is filled with failures. Date, DD, oh, because no one's ever used needed to use DD or date before. And this is just, just a partial list. I mean, massive amounts of failures. And, and this, is, this is really, really, really important. The... Uh, uh, the extremely large number of failures only cover a tiny fraction of the overall functionality of the GNU core utilities. The vast, and I mean vast, amount of functionality in GNU core utils and the UUtils Rust clone is not tested at all in these test cases, which means these were just the things they thought were, were <laughs> needed to be tested. And even then they had a massive, massive failure rate. Uh, here's, here's a graph. Uh, here's a graph which shows you the failures. Now, now in the defense of the Rust-based clones here, they are passing a large number of test cases. They're passing something like 500 test cases, which means they have implemented quite a bit of the functionality from the GNU core utils. But they're also currently failing roughly a hundred test cases, which means they've got they've got a, a failure rate of something like what it was a 17, 18% uh, failure across the board. If you have that sort of a failure rate, you don't ship. Now, and, and this has nothing to do, this has nothing to do with it being written in Rust or not. It, do, it doesn't matter. This could be written in C, uh, Bash, or friggin' Basic for all I care. If, the, if, you're, if you're trying to develop a drop-in replacement for a pre-existing, battle-tested piece of software that has existed in its current state predominantly unchanged for decades and decades, you need to have a much better pass to failure ratio here. You need to know that your test cases are not only A, very comprehensive, meaning they cover everything. Your code coverage needs to be extremely good here. Um, and B, you need to have a very high pass rate, like 100%. Because if, you're, if you have just one or two failures here, that means that your system is going backwards if you drop in the replacement tool. So let's say, let's take the date command, because that's what we're talking about here, right? Let's say if you take the GNU date command, which has been working just fine, and it, everyone knows, it, like the systems have, have, are used to its quirks, how it works, uh, scripts everywhere rely on its idiosyncrasies. It's, it's tightly integrated with Linuxy systems uh, across the map. And let's say we toss it out and we want to replace it with a new date command. Well, again, whether it's written in Rust or Basic or Pascal or friggin' Fortran, COBOL, whatever you want to write it in, doesn't matter. 
if you drop it in and it has two or three test cases that are not passing and it fixes it, it implements everything else perfectly you still are going to cause significant breakage of major systems and minor systems that rely on that tool so it's not ready to drop in and here's the thing that's crazy about this to me the engineering team at canonical responsible for ubuntu who made this decision they took a look at the at the rust based clones of gnu utilities of gnu core utils the u utils system and they said you know what yeah, sure. It's red all over the place. And some of the utilities aren't even functional at all. There's no green whatsoever on the little pass fail bar. We're going to go ahead and do it to ship it anyway. <laughs> they made a conscious decision. They knew going into the release that it was going to break right and left. And, and this isn't the first time we've seen this. Um, uh, right before the version released, there were issues with uh, uh, all sorts of bugs cropping up uh, throughout some of the GNU core utils, some of the Rust-based versions being 17 times slower than the C and C++ versions, and then the date issue coming up that causes uh, across Ubuntu systems, and we're talking servers, desktops, embedded systems, and the like, it causes automatic updates to just fail entirely I mean these are just this is just right out of the gate we're talking days out of shipping we're already seeing massive issues now here's there's good and there's bad here on the good side they've already fixed the date issue right now in order to fix that date issue they meant that they had to go in and start implementing friggin date um, which they just hadn't done before it still boggles my mind that Ubuntu is like, yeah, you know what? It's not finished, let's, but let's get rid of the thing that's finished and working and swap in the thing that's not finished and not working. And well, that'll be fine. Like, it's crazy to me that they did that. That's a, it's a terrible engineering decision. Absolutely anyone involved with that would be fired. Like if, if, if I was involved with that, you just, you just fire those people because they don't understand how software engineering works. Like. <laughs> <laughs> As someone who spent years in engineering management, I would have been fired if I had made that boneheaded of a decision. It's terrible, objectively terrible. Language doesn't matter in this, in this context. Um, they went backwards. Um, but the good news is that this is forcing the Rust-based U-Utils to improve at a rapid pace, right? They're getting real-world testing. Now, that's good because um, uh, Canonical and Ubuntu clearly seem hell-bent on they must use these re-implementations of the GNU core utilities or we'll all die. Um, so we might as well get them battle-tested so that they, they actually are functional um, because right now they're only somewhat functional. Um, so, th so that is the good news. They are getting battle-tested now. Um, it's going to be years before we can rely on them like we rely relied on the GNU core utilities, but I guess they're starting that process, right? So is, is this change setting Linux in general and Ubuntu specifically back a few years in terms of functionality, stability, and reliability? Yeah, obviously. Obviously that is. The, 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 the powers that me made the decision that it was worth setting Linux back stability-wise, reliability-wise, uh, a couple of years in order to have Rust-based utilities. Also, possibly this might be licensing uh, motivated because the GNU core utilities were all based on the GPL license, right? GNU GPL's license, and uh, maybe they didn't want that. The Rust replacements are all MIT licensed which you know uh, is a little more a lot more flexible if they're looking at it from the point of view of we don't want to be free software we want to be open source software instead maybe there's something like that going on there um whatever the motivation uh, i i still think that this is this is just patently asinine that they're they're going down this route um especially considering uh, there's still so many pieces of software i mean again look at this chart here where, where, where was that at there's still so many and this is just this is again this is just a tiny fraction so many pieces of the gnu core utilities that they've already replaced that are missing a huge amounts of functionality um including sudo uh sudo they've they've replaced 
the old pseudo with the Rust-based pseudo. And I want to read this little quote here from <laughs> the pseudo-rs project. Pseudo Rust supports less functionality than pseudo. Some of this is by design. In most cases, you will get a clear error if you try something that is not supported. For example, use a configuration flag or a command line option that is not implemented. In other words, yeah, uh, they're replacing the tools that we had with new tools that will never have the functionality that we previously wanted. And some of it we need in order to use our systems. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's asinine. It's re retarded. But it is what it is. The again, the only silver lining I can see here is that since Ubuntu based systems are clearly come hell or high water going to ship with Rust based alternatives, non GPL software, uh, because that's what they want. They want non GPL and Rust based software. Um, and so it at least now those tools are getting tested and fixed. Um, but there's a long way to go. I, again, honestly, if you started having test cases for all of the critical functionality of all of these core utilities, the red in this chart would be off the charts. I mean, it would be almost entirely red at this point. And so I, there's not a lot of silver lining. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to see the bright side here. Uh, but honestly, it doesn't seem like a great way to go. If I were running a Linux distribution, would I drop my GNU core utils for Rust-based U utils? No, of course I wouldn't. Would I think about making that change in five to 10 years when the Rust-based U utils is battle tested? Well, maybe it, it, after it's been properly tested, because again, this doesn't have anything to do from an engineering management standpoint, this shouldn't have anything to do with what the programming language used is. If you're making your decisions about what features should function on a person's computer based entirely on what programming language is used, you're doing a bad job. You're a bad software developer. You're a bad programmer, a bad engineering manager. You do not understand how to make software. Um, that's, that's, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. I, I, I find this inherently frustrating. I, I find myself terribly frustrated. I, I, again, I would absolutely fire everyone involved in making these decisions because it's just truly terrible. And clearly the decisions were more political than engineering. Because if they were truly engineering and, and, and usability and user experience based decisions, they wouldn't have made these decisions. Like there's no human on earth that would have made these decisions if those were the priorities. But if the priorities were um, a political decision around let's implement more Rust, a religious decision, because let's be honest, Rust evangelists are very religious in nature, right? They get they get furiously angry whenever everyone, anyone criticizes Rust. They get furiously angry if you just mention the existence of other programming languages. They want to they want to wipe them out like an inquisitor, like they're 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 they're, they're incensed. They they become enraged by the existence of C. So it becomes a, a a political or religious decision if that's the case. Or, or it's a strange business decision to try and remove the GPL from Ubuntu as much as possible to focus more on something like the MIT. I mean, that, that's possible as well. We'll find out as we go. But I, I want to say this straight up. There is uh, almost no chance that this is the last of these sorts of issues that we see in just the Ubuntu 25.10 release cycle. Uh, this is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we're going to see a lot more as we go. Uh, it just That's just the way this works. That's the way this works. These are large, complex, interconnected systems. That's what a Linux distribution is. They have a ton of pieces of software. And almost all of that software is reliant on some of these core utilities. And when you swap out huge numbers of the core utilities all at once with untested clones that even in their minimalist testing that they have done are failing, closing in on 20% of the time, 
you're not you think you're not going to have problems you're going to have tons of problems in fact it is a minor miracle it has gone as smoothly as it has and it has not gone smoothly uh thank you to the lunduke journal subscribers for uh allowing this coverage to be possible and allowing me to rant about this on this fine day go to lunduke.com and click on links where you can watch all the shows listen to the podcast interact with the lunduke journal for free and of course there's lots of uh lots of cool perks like mp4 downloads and pdf ebooks i've written over the years forum access for the exclusive lunduke journal subscribers a whole bunch of perks for people who decide they want to support the lunduke journal which is of course in addition to all that warm fuzzy feeling you get for supporting the last bastion of truly independent, big tech free, non-woke, audience supported, ad free tech journalism on planet earth. So thank you for being a part of that. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do, wait a minute, wait a minute. I wanna give a shout out to the lifetime subscribers. They're right over here. Thank you to the lifetime subscribers of the Lunduke Journal. That's a small collection of them right there. I only add them onto that list, the lifetime subscribers, if they've asked, right? Uh, I, because I don't want to out anybody as being a Lunduke <laughs> Journal subscriber. I know, I know you get in a lot of trouble in some corners of uh, the world of big tech if you <laughs> are outed as a Lunduke Journal subscriber. So I only add people here if they're brave enough to let me know they want to be added. And I've got a few more I need to add there as well. Uh, but thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers for making it possible. I couldn't do it without you. And with that, again, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. End broadcast. <laughs>